Hey guys, so today we're going to do some cheesy hash browns and we're going to make them kind of similar to what Cracker Barrel does. So I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick of what we can do here on the Blackstone Griddle. Normally it's an oven recipe. You're going to take it and mix it all together and put it into the oven and bake it in the oven. But today we're going to do it griddle style. So first thing we need to get is some shredded hash browns. Now these are frozen, so it makes it pretty easy. They're already cut for us. So we're going to go ahead and take a little bit of this and stick it onto our griddle. And when you're doing something frozen, don't just spread it all around your griddle or that's where you get a chance of warping. So I always pile it up on top and we're going to be mixing it up quite a bit. All right, so I used about half the bag there. And on the other side, we're going to take a little bit of ghee and put that onto the griddle. And we're going to put some onions right in that. And we'll saute these guys up a little bit here. And we'll take some ghee and put that into our hash browns as well. Adding a little bit of moisture to it is going to help it to be able to um, get the heat to be transferred throughout. Plus, the recipe calls for butter anyway, so now you don't have to add as much. So whenever I'm doing something like this and I want to mix it well, um, I kind of spread it out like this, and then I fold it over. And then I do the same thing the other way. And now that we've got our heat transfer a little bit, it's not nearly as cold and frozen anymore. We can spread that out to get good solid heat across the whole thing. So our goal of our onions isn't to get them all black, it's just to kind of season them up. Um, once we've got that here, we can actually take those, add them to our hash browns. All right, we'll do a little bit of salt and pepper on these guys. What's up, buddy? You got Miles over there spectating. What's going on, bud? All right, go ahead and mix these up a little more. Uh, they're just shredded frozen hash browns that I got out of the freezer section at the grocery store. Yep, we got those at Kroger, I think. We are cooking on a medium heat, so it's not super hot. I'm not trying to burn anything. All right, and then over here on this side, we're actually gonna take a little bit of oil. And we're gonna cook some chicken tonight, so we're gonna do that over here. And I just took a couple of uh, chicken breasts and cut them into tender. All right, go ahead and mix up our hash browns a little more. If you've ever had hash brown casserole at Cracker Barrel and you've had the good hash brown casserole, it's not super crisp. All right, so here is the secret ingredient to hash brown casserole and it's cream of chicken soup, uh, believe it or not. And this is what makes this really good. So we're gonna be adding some cream of chicken soup to it. And then the other is to get a sharp cheddar. We're gonna do a cheddar cheese with that. So we'll get those ready. We're not ready to add it in just yet, but I'm just getting it prepped. Thank you. 
You want some cheese? All right, he'll be our taste tester to make sure the cheese is good. Right, buddy? Yeah, so let us know where you guys are from. Let us know what you're cooking. Let me know if you want me to try anything on the griddle. I'll be happy to do that. Um, it's important to make sure you guys know. Um, I'd be happy to cook whatever you want me to cook. So if you guys want a demonstration of something, you want me to try something, let me know. I'll be happy to do that. Otherwise, I just try to keep coming up with different ideas and stuff to do on the griddle. A lot of people have seen smash burgers. They've seen how to do fillies, um, a lot of that stuff. So it's very common. So I try not to do the common stuff. Doug asked what setting on the griddle. Uh, we've got everything on medium, uh, actually right about medium low currently. So not super hot. Um, I like to keep it a little bit lower sometimes just so I can keep up with it a little bit easier when I'm doing a lot of stuff, especially when you do hibachi. You don't need it to be super hot. Cool, what's up Craig? Yeah, Craig just picked up, I believe, a 22-inch here recently that he's having some fun with. So I've seen him post some cool stuff, some awesome stuff that he's making. All right, so we're going to go ahead and add some cream of chicken soup. And we're going to do just a little bit of this at first. Actually, I'm going to flip my chicken first. Do it on the other side. All right, so we're going to do some cream of chicken soup, and I'm going to put this right on top at first. And we're going to do just about half the can at first, and we'll add some more in if we need to. Dude, we, I did a French toast video before, um, and I've got that posted out there, so that's pretty awesome. I love French toast. It's easy to make on the griddle. It gets to show off a little bit. It tastes so awesome. Yeah. So you see when you're doing like soups and stuff like that on the griddle, um, just keep flipping it and mixing it. And what I'm looking for when I add just a little bit of soup, I'm looking for it to kind of stick together. When I flip it, I don't want any of the hash browns to fall out by themselves. That's when I can tell it's still a little bit too dry. Um, I'm looking for kind of just like a, a wet mix is what you're looking for with this. And then we're going to add a little bit of more cheese to it so it's going to make it all just really stick together well. Alright. What's up buddy? We've got enough cream of chicken soup in there. We're just going to go straight for the cheese. All right, now I can put it right on top. And we can always add a little bit more if we need to. Start off with a little bit less than what you might think. And again, we're gonna fold it right in. Uh, get in there. Um, there's a seasoning video that's posted in the top of the group. If you go up to topics, at the very top, there's a bunch of little tabs up there. Uh, topics is one of them. And if you click on that, one of the topics is how to season your Blackstone. There's a bunch of videos in there. It can seem intimidating at first, but it's not. I mean, it's as simple as crank it up as high as you can, put a thin layer of oil on there, um, and let it just smoke. And once it stops smoking, add another layer. And you just do that five times. Once you do that, it's pretty much done. Um, it's pretty much ready to go. You'll see it'll go from that silver to just all of a sheen of black. Um, the fronts, like the front section, about three, four inches, won't get super black right away. It's going to take some time for it to get there. So don't be freaked out if all of a sudden you're like, what am I doing wrong? You're not doing anything wrong. Also, the first couple of times that you cook on it, you might get a little bit of sticking, but that's normal. Um, the more you cook on it, the more season that it gets and the less oil that you're going to need. Think about this, so like, I'm cooking with a lot of cheese right now, and we're putting cheese directly on this griddle, you see none of it sticking. If you were to do this in a normal pan, it'd just be a nightmare. So that's what's so great about a griddle. 
All right, we're gonna put a little more cheese in there. Again, putting the cheese right on top and we'll just hold it right in. And all that's just gonna melt in there. Have you done fried green tomatoes on the grill? I have not done fried green tomatoes. Partly because I don't like tomatoes. My wife does though. I bet she'll want us to make them eventually. Ah, uh, definitely got to get one for home. I'll tell you, we originally got one. We got a 22 inch. And we got it for the thought of we'll take it camping with us and then we'll use it at home. And we quickly found out, we quickly found out that we needed to have one at home that was a little bit bigger as much as we like to use it. So so we ended up getting the 28 inch and uh, the 36 inch was not as popular at the time. But I still think I'd probably get a 28 inch just even because with our family of five, we don't ever really fill this all up unless we're having like a party of everybody coming over. So we're pretty happy with our 28 inch. <laughs> all right. So this is looking pretty much done. So we're going to take this and stick it into a thing I've got here. Now, obviously, you can adjust the ingredients for however many people you're feeding. Um, really, my wife and I will be eating this, so you can see how it looks. I cooked it until everything was melted. Um, you can tell it's hot, and there's starting to be a little bit of brown in there, and that's what I'm looking for. We're not looking for it to get super crispy. We're looking for it to be more of like a casserole. And so this is the hash brown casserole that we made here. So I've got that taken care of. Now, with the chicken, it's almost done could see a little bit of a spot where I need to cook it on this side on this tender but the other ones are pretty much done so what we're gonna do I like to add just a little bit of butter to the top not a lot but the reason why I do that is I'm gonna follow it up with this uh, Parmesan ranch um, and we're gonna add that we're gonna have Parmesan ranch chicken tenders tonight and I put a little bit of butter on there just to help that stick to it and this stuff is awesome if you haven't had it yet it's definitely worth a try Hey Piper said he's got a 17 inch for camping and then went back two weeks later and got a bigger one for home. <laughs> exactly right. And Doug said he's got a 17 inch one for camping. Yeah, a lot of people will end up getting a smaller one because they think they don't want to take up too much space and then they end up going back and getting another one. And a lot of people even will uh, find out that they use this more than the regular grill and so they just stop using their grill entirely. In fact, that's what we did. We had a grill and our neighbors were moving and they didn't have a grill for the new house and so we were like here take our grill you can have it because we're using this thing all the time so all right so parmesan ranch chicken tenders and hash brown casserole tonight and so we are ready to go in there and eat uh, pretty easy meal tonight and let's show you cleanup real fast guys because it's really super simple and when we do a cleanup, I like to just get it done so I can go inside and sit down and enjoy the food of the family. So I always clean off my scraper first, or my spatula rather, with my scraper. <laughs> <laughs> I always clean the edges first. And we're going to turn the heat all the way off. We'll scrape all this stuff into the magic hole in the back. As simple as that. And now we'll take a little bit of our oil. Doesn't take a whole lot because we're already really well seasoned and we're just going to spread this oil all around. And wherever you see that it's kind of dry, just hit it with a little bit of that oil. You can use a paper towel if you want to. I've done this method for over a year now and have had no issues whatsoever. So. Super simple guys, very easy meal tonight. 
Just like going to Cracker Barrel for about a third of the price. Doug asked, any rust issued when, when not in use? I have no rust issues whatsoever. I personally try not to use water during cleanup or during cooking. I'll use water a little bit when I steam vegetables or when I steam. Uh, I want to try to melt some cheese on burgers and things like that. Other than that, I try to stay away from water. Um, not that I think that water, if you use it constantly, would rust it, but what metal and water make rust, right? So I just try to avoid it as much as I can. As long as you leave a coat of oil on it when you're done, um, you'll have no issues. We've coated it, and then um, just a couple weeks ago, Labor Day, we went on vacation, and even after vacation, we came back and went camping right afterwards, and so for about a week and a half, we weren't able to use it. Came back, opened it right up, ready to go, so no issues there. Don't be afraid to leave a layer of oil on there because when you preheat it the next time before you eat, it's just gonna burn off that oil and then you can add a little bit extra if you need to for cooking. But other than that, super simple. It's a very easy tool to use once you learn how to use it. It is very intimidating for some people as soon as you start, but just do low temperatures. You can do low, it takes a little bit longer to cook sometimes, but that's okay, you wanna kind of get that, you wanna kind of get that down and get the understanding of it. So, all right. Uh, Nicole, All right, guys. Where did you get the tools? Uh, these tools I got from Walmart. Uh, these are wood tools. I found these to be the best ones I've got. I got some of the other ones that are gray and orange, but they felt like when I was pushing down to make smash burgers and stuff, very flimsy. And these are very solid. Um, I haven't had any issues with these bending whatsoever. Um, as far as uh, there's tools down here, maybe you're talking about these I've got from Harbor Freight. Um, this one right here is just a like a pan or a tray, and this one's actually a spray paint can. But these are perfect because you can pop them right off. They're on huge magnets on the back so that you can uh, um, wash them if you want to. So you can take them off and wash them easy. Otherwise, they stick right on there super solid. You don't have to be afraid. You're not going to bump them and knock them off, so they're going to stay on there. Uh, so I love that down there. So I've got all of my seasonings and tools and things I need down here. Um, I've got wind guards on the side. I went ahead and bought the wind guards from uh, through Walmart for Blackstone specific, uh, but I found out with the hinge lid, I couldn't use the back ones. I could only use the side ones, but that's okay because I don't have much wind coming from the back. It was only the sides that I had to worry about, so that works for me. You can get the dollar scrapers from Dollar Tree. That helps you out there. Um, we've got this table over here that we use. I got that through Target. I think it's called a Unity XL. Uh, table it's awesome We've, it's got storage down below so I've got you can see my lid down there I've got a lid down there can keep stuff down there um, to use um, great place to put plates and stuff like that cool all right guys so I think we're gonna pop in and go eat so um, have a great night until next time it's great catching up with y'all